Welcome to We Are All Tech Librarians, Technology in the Library, part of the State Library of Iowa core coursework for our endorsement program. My name is Samantha Bowers. I'm the consultant for continuing education at the State Library of Iowa. I'll be your instructor for today's course. My contact information is on the screen, so feel free to reach out with any questions on this topic or with questions related to the State Library's continuing education or endorsement programs. My thanks to a former colleague of mine here at the State Library, Marie Harms, for assembling a lot of this content. Let's get started. We always like to start these modules with what we hope you'll be able to do at the end of our time together. I hope you leave with a strong understanding that technology is important to your work in a library, no matter what your role is. We're going to talk about various technology you might find in your library. I hope you can identify what that means for you specifically. And lastly, I'll challenge you to make a list of the technology you might need to use and rate your comfort level on using that tech, helping patrons use it, and troubleshooting it should difficulty arise. To answer that first learning objective, I'll refer you back to the title of this course. We're all tech librarians. No matter your role and no matter the library, hiding from computers and technology isn't a great option for you or your patrons. From the smallest library that may have only one or two public access computers to the largest library with a full computer lab and a makerspace, being versed in the technology offerings of your library is important. Remember, at one point, book them, books themselves were considered technology. Hundreds of years ago, they changed the way information was produced and consumed in the same way that digital media has gradually altered the information landscape over the last several decades. Your public library can embrace the digital shift to better serve the information needs of your patrons. Having staff who know and understand the technology used in the library will lead to more efficient and effective library services for your community. Let's dive into the kinds of technology you may encounter in your work in the library. For the purposes of this module, I've divided library technology into three types. The first is the technology systems, software, equipment, and processes that are forward-facing and used by your library patrons. This could be things like public access computers, printers, scanners, meeting room equipment, makerspace equipment. The second is the technology that you might circulate to patrons for their use outside the library. This could be things like wireless hotspots or mobile devices that they can use if they don't have access to those things at home. Circulating these items can help close the digital divide in your community. The last type of technology is the technology systems, software, equipment, and processes that are used behind the scenes by library staff to make the library operate smoothly and efficiently. First, let's look at some of the technology and customer skills related to technology you may need and use in your library. There is some overlap here between the skills and technology described here and some of the behind the scenes operational technology we'll talk about at the end of our time together. What technology skills do you need to work in a library? This can vary based on your role, but at the most basic level, you need to be comfortable using a computer. Almost all library operations involve a computer, Many library systems are web-based, and that means you access them through a browser like Chrome, Firefox, or Edge. You need to know the web address and the login credentials to access these systems. Most likely, your library automation system, what you use to check out books, is web-based. A password manager can help you and the rest of the library staff manage the many credentials that will be needed. And we'll talk more about password managers in a moment. At the start of the endorsement program, you took a technology self-assessment. If there are categories of technology skills in that assessment you feel unsure of, take time for professional development courses that can help you learn more so you can better serve your library and your patrons. You will also need basic Office Word and data processing skills. This will mean knowing your way around Microsoft products like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, or free tools that do similar tasks like those available in Google Drive. You can also use free web-based platforms like Canva to create professional looking graphics, signage, and presentations for your library. Patrons may sometimes need help on the computers. They may need help searching the internet, navigating websites, filling out online forms, setting up accounts, and generally using a computer. How good are your skills? How comfortable are you teaching someone what you know? Remember what we talked about in the module on customer service? 
One hallmark of customer service mentioned was competence. It is good customer service to have staff working who are competent with the technology in the library. This competence should extend to any electronic databases the library may provide. If a patron comes in with questions about your ebook system, like Hoopla or Libby, can you help them? If the president of a nonprofit needs help with foundation directory or a school teacher wants to use BrainFuse with her class, are your staff equipped to answer their basic questions? Ideally, they should be. Public access computers, or PACs, are very important for libraries. The library is one of the few places that provides computers, internet access, and printing for everyone. You should be familiar with each public access computer in your library. You should know how to start up and shut down the computers. You should know if they're locked down with wiping software, such as Deep Freeze, or use content management software to restrict what websites users can go to. You should know if the PACs use antivirus control. You should also know how the PACs are managed. How do users sign up to use a computer? Are there time restrictions for users? Can users extend their time? Sometimes PAC management is done with software and sometimes with a low tech solution, such as paper forms. Public access also includes public access to the internet. All public libraries in Iowa are connected to the internet and provide access for patrons. Most public libraries also have wireless access available so people can bring their own devices and connect to the internet. You should know who provides the internet to the library, the ISP or internet service provider, and the bandwidth speed that is provided to the library by the company. True broadband is a download speed of at least 20 megabytes per second. You should know how the internet comes into the library and the pieces of network equipment that are in use. This could include a modem, router, and firewall. You don't have to learn how to troubleshoot internet connectivity issues if you know who to call. Who supports con internet connectivity at your library? You may have to call the ISP directly or call your library tech support person. Either way, keep the contact information handy. Additional front of the library technology offerings are printing and copying. Many libraries have large multifunction printers or NFPs that can copy, fax, scan, and print. All library staff should be familiar with your machines and be able to perform all the functions on them. Fortunately, these machines are usually leased and supported by an office company who can offer support and repairs. Even though these machines are pretty solid, they will malfunction or break. Be sure you know how to contact the company for support and repairs. Some libraries have a wireless printing system set up. This is usually installed on a print server, which can be another computer or the library file server. You should know the basics of how this works and be able to troubleshoot wireless printing problems. There could be some additional miscellaneous pieces of equipment. This could include things like door counters, fax machines, or basic AV equipment. I really cannot stress how important it is that all staff feel comfortable using and troubleshooting technology available for patrons to use in your meeting rooms. If a group is using the room in the evening or on a weekend, can the staff working at those times help make sure that the group can project a laptop, use the microphones, or navigate other technology available in the room? The same holds true for most makerspace equipment should you have it. You may have some highly specialized tools in your makerspace that it doesn't make sense to train everyone on, but in general, staff should know what is available for patrons to use and know some basic functions. I'll close this portion on front-facing technology with this chart from the 2020 Public Library Technology Survey. The survey was conducted of over 9,000 libraries in the U.S. by the Public Library Association, PLA, in early 2020. The chart shows the percentages of city, suburban, and rural libraries that offer various pieces of technology for in-library use. Which of these do you have in your library? Do you know how to use them and help patrons with them? Which do you think would be beneficial to add in your library? Next, let's spend just a couple minutes talking about technology you might circulate to patrons for use outside of the library. Many libraries circulate a variety of non-book items. This could be anything from snowshoes to cake pans, and yes, hotspots, e-readers, and other devices too. You may find that patrons don't have reliable internet access at home, and one way to help close that digital divide in your community is to offer these types of resources. 
You want to make sure to do your research to find out what companies sell hotspots that will have good service in your area and research what kinds of policies you should have in place to make sure the offering isn't abused by patrons or leaving the library on the hook for a big expense if a hotspot or other type of device should go missing or get damaged. A search on Library Talk should net you a number of sample policies related to circulating technology or check with other larger libraries in your area that might have a lending program. The State Library has published a kernel with the Sioux City Public Library on their hotspot lending program. Find it in Iowa Learns or on our YouTube channel. Again, the Public Library Technology Survey sheds some light on the kinds of devices loaned by libraries. Hotspots are definitely the most popular, but many libraries do also allow the checkout of laptops, tablets, and e-readers. Our last section will look at the technology that is used behind the scenes to support library operations. Your library's automation system is probably the most important system that keeps the library running smoothly. Sometimes this is called an ILS, for Integrated Library System. This means that it performs several separate library functions, but they all work together. They're integrated. For example, when you catalog a book and add it to the system's database, it shows up in the public catalog for the patron and in the circulation module for the desk staff to check it out. Library automation systems can also include functions for acquisitions, reporting, patron or borrower management, and discovery. You should know the functions, of the library automation system specific to your job. You should also know where to find instructions and training and what technical support options are available to you. In Iowa, with a few exceptions, each library owns and operates their own library automation system. The state library does not run or own a library automation system for libraries. That's why we've drawn a line through the state library logo on this page. Some popular automation systems in Iowa are Apollo by Biblionics, Atrium by Book Systems, Destiny by Follett, and larger ones like Sierra by CRC Dynix, Polaris by Innovative Interfaces, and Library.Solutions by TLC. There are numerous posts on Library Talk about these systems. If you're considering migrating, check there to see what's been said about the pros and cons of each by libraries using those systems. You can also ask other libraries in your county or other libraries nearby what they use. Using the same system across a whole county can be helpful to patrons who may use multiple local libraries. It may also offer some opportunities for collaboration and sharing of resources. Learning how to record and manage passwords is very important in library work. If you are new to the job, most likely someone gave you a binder or a list of usernames and passwords for the various library systems, software, processes, and equipment that you will need to use. If you were not given such a list, start making one for yourself. Since almost all your library functions will require you to use some sort of technology system, you need to keep the login credentials handy. You could keep the passwords in a physical place, like the binder we were just talking about, or you could use an online password manager, such as 1Password, Keeper, LastPass, or Dashline. There's many more available online as well. There are both free and paid options for most online password managers. Library staff also use email for communication with patrons, the board, the state library, and vendors. You should know what email addresses the library uses or acquire and set up your own library email account. Library staff should each have their own library email account. Do not use your personal email for library business. You'll likely find that issues with email are some of your most frequently asked questions from patrons using your public access computers. Knowing some email basics, including how to reset a password across a variety of systems can be very helpful in your customer service efforts. Interlibrary Loan is another popular service offered by Iowa libraries to their patrons. In Iowa, Interlibrary Loan among libraries is encouraged and supported by several programs of the State Library. First, there is the Silo Interlibrary Loan System, used by over 700 public and academic libraries to share items with each other. The Silo ILL system is built upon a shared union catalog called the Locator, where libraries add their holdings so other libraries can find and request the items. The Silo ILL system enables the requests, borrowing, 
and lending transactions, you should know how to use this system, how to log in, track transactions, request items for patrons, and lend items to local other libraries. Another element of interlibrary loan is the Iowa Shares delivery system, free to your library, that picks up and drops off library items. You should know how to package and label the library items to be sent off or received. The Iowa Shares couriers visit each Iowa library twice per week. The third element of interlibrary loan is the interlibrary loan reimbursement program that pays a library for each loan of library items to other libraries. This funding is part of a larger state-funded program called Enrich Iowa. We cover more details about Enrich Iowa and the ILL reimbursement program and other modules of the endorsement program or find more information on our website. A web presence and social media are among the last pieces of technology we will cover. All accredited public libraries in Iowa are required to have a website. Standard 39 of the in-service to Iowa standards reads, quote, the library maintains a current website. To meet this standard, the website must include, at a minimum, access to the library's online catalog, information about the library, and links to local, state, or national resources. A social media page, such as Facebook, does not meet this standard, close quote. This is an important communication tool about your library to the public. Longtime patrons and new people in town alike will use your library website to find out how to use your library and look for services and events. You should know how to navigate your library's website and what information is on it. You may be asked to help edit the website, and if so, you will need to know how to log in and how to make changes to it. Some libraries have Facebook pages and Twitter accounts. Some libraries post to Instagram and Pinterest. Some libraries use Goodreads. Social media usage is not required for accreditation, but can be useful in reaching patrons where they are and can be used to promote library services, events, and materials. You should know what social media your library participates in. You can use tools like Canva to create professional graphics for your social media feeds. You can also be on the lookout for ready-made posts from vendors like BrainFuse or Overdrive. Uh, or Lib also known as Libby, that you may want to promote to your patrons. Finally, you should know how to access usage reports and statistics for various pieces of library technology. Your ILS will likely have a robust suite of reports that you can use for a variety of purposes, including determining active versus inactive borrowers, finding weak points in your collection to help your purchasing decisions, and exploring what parts of your collection are circulating most. You can also use reports from other web-based systems to see what's being used and how often resources are accessed in order to best determine where to direct your budget for online resources. The State Library offers HooFi to all public libraries free of charge. HooFi includes a Wi-Fi usage counter to monitor and track the number of devices on a wireless network. Unrelated to Wi-Fi counting, you can also use HooFi's community calendar program and registration tools free of charge. Data collected in HooFi is automatically added to the Public Library Annual Survey each year. And again, those HooFi tools are provided at no cost to Iowa Public Libraries by the State Library of Iowa. Gathering, analyzing, and reporting these statistics are vital pieces of making a case to your stakeholders for continued provision of online resources in your library. Again, I'll close this section with this graph from the PLA survey. I want to call your attention to the last statement on the list, hardware replacement schedule. This means that a library is intentionally setting aside funds each year to repair and replace computers and other equipment in the library. There's also a standard in the in-service to Iowa public library standards. Standard 40 reads, quote, the library budgets for computer replacement on a regular basis, close quote. Regularly replacing and updating public and staff hardware may seem like a lot of work on the front end, but will pay off in the long run. As we wrap up here, I hope you'll consider doing one or more of these next steps on your journey to being a tech librarian. First, make a list of the technology in your library. Can you use it? Can you use it with confidence? Could you train a patron on it? Next, have some basic troubleshooting steps handy in case tech goes off the rails, which it often does. Keep in mind that troubleshooting might be as simple as calling the ISP or getting in touch with the company leasing your hardware. 
Lastly, start to dream of what new technology you might like to see in your library and start to build that into your budget or strategic plan. Thanks for watching. This concludes the course on technology in the library for the endorsement program for the State Library of Iowa.